Welcome to Herman Hits the Road and in this video we're going to be replacing the rear brakes. So what do I mean by the rear brakes? Well, let's take a look at what I bought. I bought a pair of two pairs of brake shoes, um, a brake fitting kit. This will actually do both sides. And two brake wheel cylinders. I'll put a list of all the items in uh, the video description below, all purchased from uh, Coastal Motorhomes. And uh, if you want to, if you fancy a discount, check out the description below. There's a code in there which you can use in your checkout online. First thing you're going to want to do is jack up one side of your motorhome. Uh, make sure you've got some really good sturdy uh, axle stands. These are for three ton vehicles. And so is the jack just there. Um, over there we have a chock stopping the front wheels from moving. Now what we need to do is take these out and release the handbrake. So this should, shouldn't be too much of a hassle getting off the, the drum because we took it off last weekend. But if you did struggle with that you're going to need a, uh, a few hammers and uh, something to pry it off. Malarkey. So there is the uh, the inside of your brake drums. Um, this is the lining here is actually what stops your vehicle. You can see how thick that lining is there. Not this side, this darker side, but this side. Comparing it with the new one, it's a good three mil extra, at least three mil extra on the new one. But we're also going to be replacing the uh, spring clips here. Now uh, that comes in all the kit and these as well and we got new cylinders and this is the thing that when you put your foot on the brake it pushes these pins out which pushes the brakes that way and that way hitting the drum let's take a look at the inside of the drum it's still quite warm actually from uh, driving here but uh there should be any divots or anything quite smooth we had these off last weekend so we know the quality already but they're looking good the other thing if I can just add yes add right if I just add this add is yeah. that if you're not used to doing things like this it's not it, it looks scary but it isn't okay as long as you obey you know the basic laws of safety you know make sure you got it jacked up properly on an axle stand on level ground you know give it a little shake make sure she's all good you know even give the axle stand a little tap listen to the noise it makes but then when you look at the drum take a photograph of it okay just give it a photograph a couple of photographs like that so when you come to put it back together if you're not sure what's going on this, this, you know, this is a good reference to go to as a little diagram. Yeah. Excellent advice. Very nice. It's not just a pretty face. I won't go that far. I'm surprised that lens doesn't crack. <laughs> it's always advisable because they're not very expensive. You know, the cheapest chips really is to replace the wheel cylinder stroke slave, but they're commonly known as wheel cylinders. Um, when you check them, you know, always make pull the rubber back, make sure there's nothing leaking out there. You know, this one's quite damp, see, so, so I think that's leaking fluid. So change it anyway. And even if you change the rear shoes and they're not damp, change them because you're in there doing it, you know. Yeah. So you're going to clean all this up. Um, but the thing you, I'd advise you to do first is this is 21 years old, Hermie. He's 21 years old, Herman. So the, the pipes that go in the back here, the brake pipes that go back here, have probably been in there 21 years. Mm. And they've been changed. So you don't want to put an open-ended spanner on it. You want something like that. You know, uh, uh, spend the money, buy the tool, get it, it, that will grip that on five sides of the nut as opposed to just two sides. Okay? Soak them up first. Now do this before you change anything else, before you even attempt to get into the shoes, because you don't start to get into the shoes, then you can't get the wheel cylinders off. Yeah. Okay? So take your, your spanner the right size, 
over the pipe and grip your nut so there so you can see you've got your, your spanner it grips four or five sides of the nut and then just gently with your thumb no more pressure try and push it down a bit first to tighten it and then up with your fingers gently there you go it's gone and then work it backwards and forwards yeah because what you don't want to do is to turn is, the pipe the, is to turn the pipe in the nut with the nut and split it because if you do that you're gonna have to start finding new brake lines for it and yeah. having them made up or buying them you know factory made and then you can't carry on with the job so always make sure you yeah look at that that's lovely now i can feel that's nice but that's because i've got the right spanner on there yeah, and of course the the pipes are quite thin they're not gonna you know they're, they're hollow yeah so now, now i can now i can carry on with peace of mind now i can get the shoes off and the wheels they will come off yeah if, if the bolts that hold it on the seas i can you can grind them off it doesn't matter yeah, that's, so these, got, the, that's the most important part of the whole job that's so that. these these bolts yeah. here these nut uh these bolts here we will be removing them to take out the cylinder so we're going to start removing things so what's first okay a lot of people will take the hub off what to just do the brakes? Yeah, so you've got a clear view and you can, you know, can get your hands in there. Seems a bit over. Yeah, no, I, I would never do that, you know. Well, I, I do Plus, we also I... sorted out though that last weekend. Exactly, right? yeah. So, but first thing you do is remove these springs, okay? Now, as you can see, they're a pin that comes through from the back yeah. with a spring in the middle and then a retaining clip on the outside. Now, you can get a tool that goes in and just twists them through 90 degrees and pulls it out. Yeah. But at the back there's a pin, so always put your finger on the pin at the back. So this pin here, yeah. that pin there, yeah, goes right, comes right through back and onto there. Yeah. So put your finger at the back like that, hold that like that, grip it tightly with your, your pliers, push it in and turn it through 90 degrees and it should just yeah. come off like that. Okay. Okay, one on either side, take the pins out, like so. Now mm. we've got a fitting kit, we've got new ones, but if we should make sure first of all they're actually the same size exactly right yeah exactly right yeah yeah make sure they're the same so don't don't throw anything away and keep everything together keep everything together there you go you know keep it together and you know and if, <coughs> if, if the ones that you know you can test this i mean that that's a good spring you know to check the spring for damage anything like that but don't throw it away until you check it's the same as your new one and then you can move forward you know mm -hmm. i always keep these in a little bag somewhere in, in the garage so if they would need one you know i've got one but so we'll go in and check that anyway. let's get the other one off the other side and then uh, finger on the back grip it with the pliers push it forward 90 degrees off it comes easy here we are so there's the old one and these are the new ones they look exactly the same same size and everything you've got your retaining picks out so your shoes are loose now on there and we've got to just take the drum off so uh, sorry take the shoes off so there'll be a little spring here which is for the adjuster the automatic adjuster oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we've got a new one but just to make sure it's where it goes and how it goes on and then you, if you look under here you see the handbrake cable comes through oh yeah connects up yeah yeah so there's several ways of doing this um, what I'm going to try and do is to take the top off and then slide the lot out over and put it down and get the handbrake cable out yeah. and take it in as one assembly and then build it again as one assembly because we have to use this adjuster again. Right. Okay. Hey, there's, there's this, this adjuster in here that's behind it, yeah. the spring. Yeah, yeah. and that's that's the, that's the, so that, that, that's like a, a, re, a retaining clip, sort yeah. of a ratchet system. So as you work the brake, that clicks up or down and that locks it in place. Yeah. But when we put it back together, we'll show you how you adjust that up to make sure that that's all okay before you put the drum on. Basically, what you want to do is try and avoid prising and bending anything as much as you can. So if you can, just gently, be careful with your fingers. Yeah, look, that moved out there quite nicely, you see? And if we can get the bottom to move out the same, like so, there, see? All right, okay. So hopefully that will, that spring will come off. Yeah, so yep. try and leave it as complete as you can. Yeah, because you're going to have to reassemble it. Yeah, that's right, yeah. So now hopefully bits. that will come out of there and yep. just fold over so we can get the... And get the cable out see yeah like so and on the so back what's there, stopping that now is the actual handbrake that's cable. right yeah so we'll just lift that up like that 
I don't know if you can get the camera around the back there and have a look at that. That's going to take notes here. You'll see it this side. See it there? Yep. So we've got to get that cable out of those shoes. Now, because the new shoes have got this part on them, what we can do here is we can save messing about in there, getting our fingers caught. We can bend this clip up and get this cable out. Mm -hmm. Okay, but on the new one, we're going to have to just slip it straight in. So let's try and give that a little bend up and get that out of there. Might be more manly. Yeah, they're not manly enough, are they? They're not manly enough. Let's see if I can get it. There you go. There you oh. go. Okay, and then that there. Basically, is our shoes off. So if we turn them over like that, okay, take that spring there, like that, and put it on there, like that. That's our assembly. We can now take that in mm -hmm. and build the new ones yeah. to that. Yeah. Does that make sense to everyone? <laughs> Comments, in the, Comments in, the, in the section below. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the next thing to do. So we're going to need this bit at the back here. And that big spring. That bit, bit, bit there. The adjuster. Yeah, and this spring here. Yeah. That's it, yeah. Yeah, we've got the others are we've got them, and yeah. of course this bit, which is. But we've got our photograph. We've got a good pattern <clears> here now, so it might be an idea when you've taken them off, is to get another photograph of that on the floor. Yeah, that's an idea. You know, you yeah. can't you can't go wrong really. You know, no. the thing is to make sure it goes back together the way it came apart. It isn't rocket science. It, it, it looks daunting. It looks complicated. It isn't. The most important thing about this job is making sure this vehicle is secured safely. And it's always a good idea, once you get everything off here, to actually clean the back of the brakes. This is all the crud from 20 odd years of driving around. All the brake dust. About as good as I'm going to get it. Lovely. Where's this spray? Should we give it another spray? Can do, yeah. yeah. Right, so we're just about to crack off the bolt, which holds bolts, which holds the cylinder on the back. So it's a 10 mil, wasn't it? 10 mil, yeah. Okay, make sure you got it on there properly. Don't want to round the knees off. And they are now think it's tight. Lovely. So then, there you go. So what we do now is we'll undo the the, hut, the 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 pipe out of it. Yeah. Try your utmost not to get any fluid, any grit, sorry, or dirt on the thread of the, of the, the nipple on the pipe at the end because you don't want to be trying to start that in there. No, you don't want to, be, yeah, I see what you mean, yeah. And usually they're a brass thread or a uh, an alley thread sometimes, so when you put them into the body of the cylinder, be very careful not to cross thread it because then again you're in a world of pain. As you're undoing it, if it goes tight on you, like that, backwards and forwards. Okay? Just loosening it up. Yeah, so there it's gone tight there, obviously. Yeah. So I go back and forwards, easing the thread, yeah? Until it comes out. Make sure you have a catch bowl for the fluid so it can be disposed of properly. So if we don't we just bend the pipe out of its position too yeah, much. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Anything the anything that touches the brake fluid, any rag or anything, throw it away. After carefully removing the brake pipe nut and the two wheel cylinder bolts, we were ready to remove the cylinder. That's on there really tight. So what we'll do, we'll have to give that a little bit of persuasion. You mean like talk to it? Yeah. Yeah. Siri's yeah. been leaking. Are you pointing out the rust? Is that what you mean? Yeah. And where he's been, yeah, see? And where he's been leaking past the seal, see it? Yeah. Oh, I see. Right. See it? Oh, I thought the actual. I thought the actual rubber cup was the seal, but no, no that's, that's, not the, that's, that's just, just a, a dust, dust cover. Yeah. That's a dust cover. See where it's been leaking by the seal, yeah. and the spring in there is quite weak as well. Aren't it? So this is the new cylinder. Now we've taken the the nipple off because it's uh, it's easier to uh, to fit. We'd have to have to get the spanner all the way, getting it in the way. So. Yeah. Uh, and and the other thing as well is put the. Put the pipe in before you put the two bolts in. Right. Because when it's locked in position, yeah, you've got no movement to line the thread up. Yeah. So I always do it that way. I mean, it's, you know, it's probably fit will probably tell you everything. 
do it a different way, but that's why I was doing it, because you've got to feel it in, because you can't really see it, you know. Yeah. So when you've got a car and you head over the wheel arch, but with this, you can't really get in there. But well, not when you're of um, ample proportion. <coughs> make sure the wheel cylinders are the same, you know. Just make sure that, you know, they line up, the, the, the bolt holes line up, yeah? Yes, just, yeah. And just, you know, like that. You see, and then just, yeah? Yeah. And then, um, we should be able to then get this in there. Now, this is quite a delicate thing to do. You have to be very, very careful. Wear you know? gloves. Yeah, wear gloves. Because there's and make brake sure, fluid. And make sure that turns easily, which it doesn't. What, the, the nut? You, yeah, because, you know, that's not turning easily on that pipe, see? Oh, is it not? Okay. No, so, I might have to just do something about freeing that up a little bit. Get that to turn. That's quite important. Yeah, that's 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 it. Just to work it right. That's what that's turning now. Don't do what a friend of mine done. Put the ratchet spanner in it, and then it was done up. And the ratchet spanner's like it took a photograph sent to me with a title. I won't tell you what he said for himself. He did, yeah. Experienced guy. He's, he's so frustrated not be able to get it done. Put ratchet spanner and wind away. The brake pipe nut was screwed in, followed by the two cylinder bolts. The pipe nut was the last one to be tightened down. Torque settings, these would be quite a low torque setting. Um, but the, as, an, as another little trick that my granddad taught me many years ago, which is two fingers like that and push down. And then when you can't, when it's too hard to push down your fingers, that's tight enough. Right. Okay. So, you can't over tighten it then, you see. So that's the nipple going on, back in. Yeah. And I think we're all done with that, we're just a bit of a spray. Give it a clean. And don't forget to clean the back as well. And that's brake cleaner, not WD-40 or anything like that. So what we're going to do now is assemble the brake shoes with all the springs or whatever. Uh, away from the, the hub here, the back plate, and uh, then we're going to offer it up. Assembling the new shoes was fairly simple. I just laid the parts down beside the old shoes and used them for reference. I needed three parts from the old shoes, the handbrake lever return spring, the adjuster, and the automatic adjusting lever. The photos came in handy. Getting the adjuster fitted was the difficult part. I wound it in and needed some strength to pull the spring apart. There you go, one set of assembled brakes. The brakes are ready to go on. But what are you doing here though, Chaz? Just trying to get the lid off of this. <laughs> the hardest part of the job. Do you want me to do it? No, just adjust it. There you go. <laughs> right. So. So that is copper slip or copper ease or it's, it's a grease made from copper. Yeah, all <clears throat> copper, copper content. Um, so if you look at this parts for the, the these parts here, see them? Yeah, well, it's been rubbing or it's been... Well, you can see they're, no, you can see they're gnarled, see that? Oh yeah. Right, that's where your shoes move on when they're going in and out. Yeah. So what we do is we take a tiny amount, a tiny amount, because grease will collect the brake dust. That's too much. Okay, we want that much there, uh, like that. On each of those parts, like that. Down there, once they're cleaned up, obviously. Just so that the. On the other side. Just so, see, too much, see? So the shoes can just run along there and not stick. And it takes the vibration out as well. Okay. Don't stick, don't squeal. Don't stick and don't squeal. Just a thin layer then, really. Thin layer. Thin yeah. Layer. Just, just so it's, <clears throat> it takes the friction out of it, helps it move easily. That's it, basically. Why couldn't you use any other grease? Um, you know, multi-purpose grease, for instance. Too sticky, too greasy, collects too much dust, doesn't hold the heat properly. Ah. The copper content in it helps it helps hold the heat and the friction better. Right. As opposed to multi-purpose grease. And it's, you know, if you look at the consistency of that grease to the copper grease to any other grease as well, it's you know it's not sticky. It's, it's that's almost like a nice margarine. 
<laughs> I won't have toast around your place, sir. No, don't. <laughs> it's awful. Close that bit with your fillings. So, we've got to get... The that, adjuster was at the top. That handbrake. There. Oh yeah, the handbrake. Forgot about the handbrake. <clears throat> don't do that. What do you need my handbrake for? <clears throat> so this little uh, nipple here yeah. of the handbrake cable has got to go in there. Can be fiddly. Try to keep your hands clean. Not get, get all the brake lining covered in this stuff. But this can be quite fiddly. Like so. And then try and Twist it around like, like that. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it's come out. No, it's not going to move. That did move. Clipping. That's it. One. And then fill your cylinder. Two. And then that one. Let's just have a quick check what's going on here. So we've got the brake, handbrake cable around the back of, connected to this silver arm here. <clears throat> uh, the bottom of the shoes are connected, or oh, pushed into the side of this thing. So they're not coming out. And they're just, there's no groove at the, on the cylinder, is there? So they're just uh, on the piston either side. No, that's right. So now we've got to put those pins back in and with a little clip on it. I used to be that I did it with my fingers when I was a kid. Did you need to, do you need to hold the back here? No. No, you need to hold the back there. Yeah. And then I need to go. That's it, there you go. That's it. <coughs> you cheat. Got it? Yep. That's it, thank you. It's perfect. Wow, and I've helped having an extra pair of hands. That'll be me. Hold on. What am I doing now? I'll put in. Two on there, right? Two? No, I thought, well, it's so easy to double these little, they come in the sets of four. Yeah. It's so easy to double them up when you put them on. You got that there? Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry. That's it, that's it, Perfect, <clears throat> that's it. Before we put the hub back on, we clean the hub with sandpaper. When you get new drums, that's how they look. All yeah, all nice and shiny, yeah. No scratch like that. All oh, right, yeah. That's how they look. So why, why are you doing this with the paper? To get the glaze off of it. Yeah. Because it's, it's not going to grip, is it? That's no. the key. Right. There's no key to it. It's glaze. It hasn't been often cleaned for ages. <clears throat> Is it that now? Colour of that. Wow. Because contamination what you might want to do is just run a light bit of sandpaper over the edge of these shoes to take right. any nick marks off. Because you get it, you know, wherever you do this job, you'll get that sort of thing, you know? Of course, we've got grease over them as well, yeah. well, yeah. Exactly, yeah. <coughs> but I mean, that's, that's all on there now, as you say, the spring's back in again, the adjusters are all back in. And what we'll do next job is to get the drum and adjust it up so that it's, um, you will take a bit, because although it's got automatic adjusters on it, you don't know be taking the Michael with it really and having the when you put the drum and having it spinning up or trying to get the drum when the you know the brakes are too far out because don't forget there's a lot more meat on these compared to the old ones yeah so the drums not going to go straight back on again because you messed about adjuster and everything so next part we'll adjust all that and see how that goes so to adjust the brakes up and down in and out rather um it's this little thing here so if you click it up the way with a screwdriver like so then this will, this little spring adjuster here will go into the grooves, the cogs on the on the adjuster wheel, and lock it into position as it turns around to hold it out into position. If you want to de-adjust it, pull that away like that and turn it the other way. Simple as that. Yeah. So we're adjusting the uh, the brakes right now because yeah. Well, as they wall wear, they adjust. There's a self-adjuster in there. That's right. right yeah. That's exactly right. Yeah. 
uh, having it on there now, having the, the hub on there, you're just putting those pins back in. Yeah, just to pull, pull the drum onto the yeah. right way onto the back plate to make sure, and then you just give it a spin, make sure it's all, all okay. And make sure it's at the right, adjusted right for now. If you don't want it spinning around too much, you just want it enough so that it's um, touching the, now you see that? Yeah. That's, that's nice, that's just touching. See? Yeah, you can hear it. It's just touching. That's just touching. Yeah. So that's lovely. So if it spins too freely or it's locked, yeah. that's too much. Yeah. Because it won't back itself off really. One thing I will show you, I'll tell you just quickly, okay, is if you ever do get trouble taking the drums off, if you look at Herman's drum, there are some threaded holes. Not the ones that the wheel studs go through, but these here. Oh, and I was wondering what. The, oh, okay. Yeah. Now, what they are for is you can take a bolt, I think it's about 8mm, I think, on these. Yeah. And you screw it one in each one. Yeah. And you just turn them in a little bit of time and that'll pull the, oh, okay. the drum, drum forward. Off of the hub, right? But you have to give it a bit of a whack as well. Yeah. But that's the um, and that is the uh, official way of doing it. But our our drums come off quite easily with a huge hammer and a bit of a pry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, with the fine adjusting tool. Here we are. So this is uh, just an example. If your drum was actually stuck to the hub and you can't get it off, you can uh, use these. Uh, this notice there's a triangle. You can screw in uh, some bolts into here, so you can pull the drum off the hub. We have now done uh, both sets of brakes, uh, and now we're going to do some bleeding. So we've got some air in the system now, obviously. We've um, opened it up, probably pulled some air back in. So we're going to try to get the air out and get the wheel cylinders charged up with fluid. Um, so first thing to do is to top your master cylinder up at the front of the vehicle your brake fluid. There's various ways of doing this and various devices. If you're on your own you can get a, an easy bleed type thing which is, if you would like to have a quick look, is this thing here. This is just a contraption that comes as a kit you can buy um, from most of the motor, motor, motor stores, motor uh, retail outlets and that can just go onto a tyre and the air pressure goes through the bottle you put onto your master cylinder and that will bleed the brakes out itself on your own i mean i've got this device here that's got a, a one-way valve in it no return valve i just put that in there so i can see the bubbles basically connect that to the the nipple of the wheel cylinder and then i'll get as to pump the brakes and we should get all the air out when you do do it on your own always make sure that when you've got it on you've got the hose facing up so the bubbles will rise up and go out and they're not going down if that makes any sense to you if you haven't got a, a device like this to put it into you have the hose on and you have the hose up in the upright position where the air goes up. Right. So the air bubbles going up, not down. Bubbles going up. Bubbles going up. Right. right, so one thing we need to look out for is uh, find out where the master cylinder is. And that's it there, right? It's on the driver's side or the right side of the vehicle if you're driving. Uh, that's the cylinder, there's a reservoir and it's our, it's our funnel there so we pour our fluid in. Now, <clears throat> what we need to do is first of all bleed the brake which is furthest away from that cylinder which is that one of course so the way i've got that set up there is i've got the tube on the bleed nipple like so yeah nice tight fit on there you'll be able to see the air going up and then down you should see the bubbles into the little drop of fluid i've put into the um into the receptacle right what we do is Pump the brake up and down slowly four times and then hold it down and let me know. Yeah. Keep going. Three. Can nearly adjust is working, that's good. Three. Good. Four. <laughs> and then hold it down. Yeah. Is that down? Yeah, it's down now. Keep it down. Pump it up and down. One more, hold it down. Four. Down, yeah. keep it down. Right. 
After bleeding both rear brakes, we tested that they worked. Handbrake on. Yeah. Off. Yeah. On. Yeah. Off. Yeah. Foot brake on. Yeah. Off. Yeah. Perfect. Done. Well, brakes are all bled, and it's now time for a test drive. Before we do our test drive, um, we need to put, obviously we put the wheels on. Uh, but we're going to now torque up the uh, the bolts that are holding the wheels onto the hub. Now I've, we've set this up um, at a setting of 180, 81, 81, 181. <clears throat> of course, it might be different for your vehicle. Just need to check the settings. Uh, and this is my first time of actually using a torque wrench. I might have used it before. I know how to work. Uh, yeah. So I guess I would have gone and did a bit of a star thing. Is that yeah, the kind of thing you want? Yeah, yeah, cross away. Get on there. Push it down. It's actually going the wrong way. Now let gravity help you push it down. Push it down, okay. Yeah, always have, gra I was always have gravity. To go that way. No, have gravity on your side. You will hear it click. Yeah. And it is a ratchet, don't forget, so. Yeah. You have to take oh, it off. of course. You don't have to take it off, <laughs> it's on a ratchet. There you go. One's done up. Let's try this one. So amateurish, aren't I? <laughs> You're doing it. That's the main thing, mate. That's it. Does it have to click twice? No, just click. That's it. And the final one. That's it. Done. Whew. There you there go. There you go. Probably That's one it. of the most useful tools you have in your workshop, other than the Phillips screwdriver. Because they can fix anything a Phillips yeah. screwdriver. Even punches. Anything, even punches. Feels <laughs> oh. a light dab of 60 miles an hour. Yeah, that seems to. Uh, I don't want to smash them down. No, you no, know, no, I don't no, want to... no, 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 no. I mean, they, they, they work really but, uh, well. I feel they work well. Yeah, they were working really well. Yeah, that's good. Brakes, you know, I've been in this before, and it's not front bias now. This is like that before you into brake. This does that now with brakes. Yeah. I can feel it. I can feel it. Oh, it's diving square, as they call it. Lovely. So we're back from our test drive. Driving Herman seemed to be okay. You know, braking it does seem to be a lot better than before. Uh, what do you think, though, Chaz? Yeah, well. It Herman was, um, in my opinion, when you put the brakes on, he wasn't braking evenly and he was a bit snatching. You could feel that, could yeah, you? Yeah, and a couple of the corners, yeah. Um, now he's done the rear brakes, he's, the, the braking balance is nice on it now, the bias is equal, I yeah. believe. And he does stop in a nice straight line now, yeah. and he dips where he should do, and you know, no drag, no noise, handbrake's much more efficient, much better pedal efficiency. Um, that's the way I do it, and um, that's the way we've done it. Yeah. Um, if you're not sure about what we've done, and you, you know, and you're not sure about doing it yourself, always seek professional advice because this is not a how-to. It's the way we've done mm, it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. That's about it, really. For yeah. Me. Hopefully, the video explained everything. But if there is anything that you need uh, more explaining, let us know in the comment section below. Or maybe you've done your own brakes and uh, you've got some uh, advice that you want to share. Put them in the comment section below. Until next time, thank you very much for watching. Goodbye, Chaz. Goodbye, Ed. <laughs> Adios. And fluid leaking out. Okay, yeah. And you're going to have to get your white brush out. Right. We'll put this in here now. This is, this, that's a good touch like that. Oi, we're making a movie down here. Turn that bloody engine on. Thank you. Let's turn it down a bit. <laughs> I've seen people putting these on, right? Yeah. Holding the back of it, and they're trying to push that down and hold the pin and pull the pin through and turn it, as opposed to holding that outer edge. And <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> yeah, that, I remember that, doing something that, like that. Oh, I see. Have you? <laughs> and there's not one there. And no, it's not no. Like that. it's not. so it's it's got to go around again. <laughs> you just take it off and line it up. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Right, okay. That's it. That's got to be the hardest part. <laughs> For me, is it? I can't see it. It's really strange. Thanks for watching our video. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed or leave a comment. 
and don't forget to subscribe for more video updates or maybe even watch one of our previous videos. Bye bye now.